This morning from Matthew chapter 3. Passage of scripture that we're all familiar with, the baptism of Jesus. His Father speaks from heaven. It's those words that the Heavenly Father speaks that I want us to examine today. By the way, Happy Father's Day. Would you stand with me as we read from God's Word? Matthew chapter 3, we'll begin reading in verse 13. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Dear Father, we bow before you. We thank you, Lord, today for family, for relationships. I thank you for parents, for mothers and fathers. Today we recognize fathers and and uh, I just thank you for a godly father that raised me, that, that uh, took me to church and taught me about you, taught me about Jesus, and um, uh, saw that I grew up with the uh, instruction in righteousness. And Father, I just uh, ask you to help us to be the men, the husbands and the fathers that you've called us to be. Speak to us today from your word. And uh, I just ask you to, to encourage hearts and... and um, Strengthen, strengthen loves and, and relationships, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. As soon as the baptism of Christ was finished, the Father speaks from heaven. God chose this exact moment to verbally associate Himself with His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. In the words which the Father... God the Father spoke on that day, we're given an example of how godly fathers deal with their children. So we want to examine that this morning. Why is that important? Because the way our children see us is often how they'll see God. Fathers know that, remember that. How our children, the first impressions that our children have of God is what they see in us. John Yates tells about a theology class in seminary years ago. On the first day of the semester, the professor handed out a questionnaire. The questions on the survey had to do with the students' um, perceptions of his father, his human, his earthly father, and um, what kind of relationship they had. The surveys were collected, and nothing more was said about them. The students went on for the entire semester, rigorous months of studying about God the Father, the first person of the Trinity, his attributes, his works, his words. And at the end of the course, the professor handed out a second survey. Same questions. This time, the students were to answer about their perceptions of God the Father, their Heavenly Father, and how they felt about their relationship with Him. Then both surveys were handed back to the students and they were asked to examine the two and the answers. Remember, they've just spent an entire semester studying God the Father, studying their Heavenly Father, His attributes, His um, uh, work and His words, and yet their answers were so similar, almost the same. Even after all of that semester, their perception of their heavenly father and their relationship with him was still reflective of their thoughts about their human father and their relationship with him. 
That's why this matters. God is not merely like a father. God is a father. God is our father, my friends. If our faith and our trust is in the Lord Jesus Christ, God is our father. So first of all, I, I noted that the father is not ashamed of the son. A voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He said, this is my son. The voice from heaven said, this is my son. In that statement, God is saying that I am not ashamed to identify myself with him. I am not ashamed of my son. I'm not ashamed to call him my son. As a matter of fact, God is not ashamed of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is His Son, but I declare to you that He is not ashamed of any of His children. In Hebrews chapter 11, we're all familiar with the 11th chapter of Hebrews. Verse number 16 says, But now they desire a better country, that is a heavenly, wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God. God's not ashamed of His children. What an example to human parents. Our children need to know that we're proud of them. That we're not ashamed to claim them as our children. Children need constant affirmation from their parents. And by the way, we'll usually live up to or down to your estimate of their worth. Remember that your children, our children, will usually live up to our estimate of their worth. That is, we need to love them like God the Father loves us. In Jeremiah 31, um, and verse 3, Jeremiah 31, and verse 3, the Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love, therefore with loving kindness have I drawn thee. God said, I love thee with an everlasting love. In Romans 8, notice this, in Romans 8, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. We need to love our children. We need to love them like God loves. I personally believe that nothing should ever be allowed to cause a division, a rift, in the relationship with our children. Now, there are times when God is disappointed with us. There has to be. When we mess up, when we disobey, when we fail to live by His standards, God has to be disappointed, but He still loves us. There are times when we may be disappointed with the actions and, and attitudes and things of our children, but we ought to still love them. Now, I am not talking about condoning sin or bad behavior. That's not what I'm talking about. We should not excuse the sins of our children. The sin of my child is just as bad as the sin of your child. And I shouldn't excuse it because it's my child. I should confront him. I should lovingly, lovingly confront him, call him on it, show him the right way, and invite him back to the Lord. But I ought to keep on loving him right on through it. Now that's what I'm saying. That's what God does for us. Sometimes he shows us our sin, don't he? Sometimes, but he don't condone it. But he loves us right on through it. I don't believe there's any reason for parents and children to be on the outs, not speaking and, and have no relationship. That is never right, and it is a mockery of what God intends the family and the home to be. God intends family and home to be a sanctuary, to be loving and kind. Um, by the way, genuine love is not afraid to express itself. Tell them that you love them. And tell them often. I still tell my son, 
Matter of fact, the girl that I claim it ain't really my daughter, I tell her I love her. Every time I talk to her, I love you. My son too, I love you. You know how he addresses me and how, how they both, how she addresses me? And that when it, when it, I love you. Oh, we got this little thing. We're just waving. We wave that, you know. I love you. Our children need to know while we may not can condone everything they do, we love them. They need to hear those magic words, I love you. How often does God remind us of His love toward us? Often. Often. Throughout Scripture. And every day that we live, we can see it all around us. God loves us. Let us resolve to do the same toward our children. By the way, all of our family relationships, all of our husbands, tell your wife you love her. She might, she might respond a little more, you know. You might get a favorite meal or something. You just remind her that you love her. Never be so stuffy and unemotional to respond to your children in their genuine displays of love. We've all heard about the story of the little girl that made the valentine for her dad and put hearts on it and on the inside it said, I love you. And, and she put it there where he couldn't help but find it and, and how broken hearted she was when she found it crumpled up in the trash. By the way, one of these days I'm going to die. And Michelle too. And when that happens... And Hagen's going through, going through our home. We, we had to go through our parents' home. My, my sisters and I, we went through our parents' home. We found things. I found a football scholarship. My dad had always told me that he, that he had a full ride scholarship to play football and he didn't use it. And I said, glory days, you know how that is. Found that scholarship. I didn't say I had a smart daddy. I said, <laughs> you know. But he didn't use it. But it was there. He really had it. Well, one of these days when I'm gone and Hagen's having to go through my home, you know what he's going to find? Among other things, he's going to find every note and every drawing he ever made. From the time he was able to scribble, and he brought it to him and he said, this is whatever. To the time he was older and he was drawing trucks and things like that and bringing them to me, he's going to find every one of them. And I don't know if it'll make him cry, but it's about to make me this morning. But he's not going to find them crumpled up in the trash. But anyway, this little girl was broken hearted when she found her note crumpled and in the trash. And listen, I wrote it down. Listen to her. She said, when I became a Christian, I thought about finding that valentine in the trash. And about how hurt and angry I had felt. Why hadn't my dad reached out to me in love? Then I thought about Jesus. Jesus had put a valentine on my dresser. It had my name on the outside. And on the inside it said, I love you. The letters were not written in pencil. It was written in blood. It caused Jesus His life to send me His valentine. I'm glad that I didn't crumple it and throw it away. Fathers, respond to your children in love. Let them know that you love them. And let them know that you're not ashamed of them. You're not ashamed to be called their dad, that you're proud of them. Children need to know, especially that their dads are proud of them. Especially sons. Sons, even grown sons, need to know that their dad's proud of them. I challenge you even today. Even today, they're grown, got family to own. I still tell my son, that I'm proud of him. The second thing I want to notice, or the next thing that I want to notice, is that the father accepts his son. He's not ashamed of him. He loves him. And he says, in whom I am well pleased. These words means approved of. He's well pleased. He approves of. 
His Son. God the Father looked at the man that Jesus Christ had become and said, I approve of you, my Son. Now we all know that our children might not turn out exactly like we expect them to. After all, who doesn't live in a fantasy world concerning their own children? Our kids will make mistakes. They may get into trouble. They may not be as successful as we think they could be. They may not dress like we think they should. They may wear their hair longer than we do. And I hope he wears that. <laughs> or 10 million other things. However, if they are seeking to please the Lord Jesus Christ, then we should accept them and brag on them and love them. We should not be disappointed. And by the way, that was a joke about the ponytail. I could care less. As long as he's a man of character and integrity, honesty, doing his best to take care of his family, loving and kind, I could care less how he wears his hair. It was meant to be a joke. But what I'm saying is that we should never hold up our children's past or mistakes or failures against them and, and have unrealistic expectations of them. Simply put, we're to love them. There's a word here for children as well. If you're going to live like the devil, please do not expect your parents to place their seal of approval upon your life and upon your way you're living. It's unfair to expect it, and a godly parent cannot give it. Sometimes, even though we love, love must be tough. Parents, you do your children no favors by your blanket approval of their sinful ways. You're not helping them. Perhaps your disapproval is just what they need to, as a wake-up call to bring them back to the Lord. I want to turn over to John. Chapter 5, Gospel of John, chapter 5. Jesus says, beginning in verse 17, But Jesus answered them, My Father worketh hitherto, and I work. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his Father, making himself equal with God. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what, the, what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these, that ye may marvel." Jesus is telling those listening that since the Father loves him, the Father includes him in his work. The Father includes the Son, allows the Son to be a part of his life, in other words. Jesus is merely saying that the Father is working. He loves his Son and he shows him what he's doing. He includes him in that. When he shows the Son the work, that is the Father's invitation for the Son to join Him in this activity. By the way, that will still work today. We've all got our own stories. Maybe you're mowing the lawn and the child wants to come help and really it slows you down. 
it's a push mower, you got to walk slower. If it's a riding mower, it's just really you're trying to take care of him and keep him from getting hurt rather than, and you, get, you could have got through faster. But include your child. Include your child in your work. I remember a time, and by the way, I, I took my child, I was laying tile. I was laying ceramic tile. And I, I would take Hagen on the job. I'd pay him $5 a day just to come with me. He was too little to help. He was really in the way. He's like, like five years old. I gave him $5 a day to come on the job with me, stay all day and help. But you know what he was doing? He was learning. He was learning about hard work. He was learning what work was. He was learning that, that his daddy had to go out and make a living, that his daddy had to go out and work in order to have things. He was learning all those things. And by the way, during that process, he was learning how to, how to read a measuring tape and like the thing shows back here, he was learning how to use tools and, and those kind of things. But I remember one time I couldn't take that. Every, every time I tried to turn, he was right there. I stumbled over him. And finally looked at me. Finally looked at me one day and he said, Daddy, I'm sorry for being in your way. I took him up and I said, Son, you're never in my way. Don't ever, ever, ever think. You're in my way. Sometimes I slow God down in his work. But he don't ever push me aside and say I'm in his way. Be careful. Include your children in your life, in your work, whatever you can. You might not take them, take them to your job and actually in, include them in your, in your vocation, but you can include them in the work you do around home. You can include them in your life. Don't make them feel like they're in your way. Because when they do, they'll feel lonely. We lose way too many teens and adolescents today because they felt lonely and they took their own life. The godly father takes time to include his children in his life. He models appropriate behavior before them. And more often than not, They'll follow his example. Our time with our children is essential. I read about a young man that was come before the judge. He was being sentenced to prison time for crimes that he had committed. His dad was a law professor. The judge began to speak to him about his father and says, don't you remember the great man that your dad was and all of that? He said, what I remember when I, when I went to him asking for his attention, he said, run along, son, this book must be written. I've got to finish this book. The lawyer, I mean the judge, muttered to himself, Alas, finished the book, but lost the boy. Don't let that happen to you. Don't let it. Don't let it. This is supposed to be an uplifting message, not a tear down message. So I'm just saying, don't let it happen. Spend time with your children. And by the way, time spent with children is never wasted. Never wasted. Charles Adams. The son of President John Adams wrote in his diary one day, went fishing with my son today, a day wasted. The boy on the same day wrote in his diary, went fishing with my father today, the most wonderful day of my life. Things have a way. Time has a way of changing relationships. Y'all remember a spell whenever, whenever my son was a teenager. He couldn't get on the road without hitting a deer. And uh, 
And he'd bring that truck home and daddy'd fix it. We'd get online and order parts and together we'd put it back together. And give him long enough to go find another deer. But I keep thinking about that, daddy will fix it. Friday night, I'm coming home after revival. Meeting the car, kind of headlight blinded. It's dark, got mine on low beams. All of a sudden, I'm in the middle of a tree. Michelle said, what was that? Because we went through it at 75. Michelle said, what was that? I said, it was a tree, and I didn't know it until I was in the middle of it. I went over part, I went through part, and I went under part. car was still rolling. Michelle said, so I said, no need to stop now. It's still going. Went to the house and got out under the light and looked at it. And I didn't plan it this way. It just come to me. She said, how bad is it? You know what my response was? Hey, going to fix it. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm serious. I mean, I didn't think about it for, see how things, time and Yeah. For you that don't know, he works at a body shop. But anyway. <sighs> Did you know that more collect calls are made on Father's Day than any other day of the year? Did you know that? That's an interesting stat. I read of a nun who worked in a men's prison. She ministered in a men's prison. One of the inmates asked her to help him get a Mother's Day card. Mother's Day was coming up. And she did, and other inmates heard about it, and they began to ask. And, and she wrote to a card company, and they sent boxes of, of Mother's Day cards, and, and they were everyone used. The inmates in that prison filled them out and sent them to their moms. So she thought she'd get ahead of the game. And so Father's Day was coming, and so she wrote the card company back, and they sent boxes of Father's Day cards. None were used. Or very few were used. You know what that said to me? Clearly, men in prison lack fathers. And all the examples that we've talked about today. Perhaps as you listen to this message, you realize that there's room for improvement. Come to these altars. The Lord will meet you there. Maybe you've realized that you need the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. He loves you more than you could ever know, more than you could ever realize. He paid your way. Come and accept and embrace Him. Or right where you're at, pray to God for forgiveness and Claim Jesus as your Savior, but then come and let the rest of us know that we can rejoice with you. But however the Lord might have spoken to you today, I ask you to respond to Him. Let Him have His way in your life. Dear Father, we bow before you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for being the Supreme Father and giving us example of how we can be fathers, good fathers, train our children in the right ways. And God, I thank you for the relationship that I have well, my son today is more of a more of a man to man, or more of a more of a friendship. And I thank you for that. I thank you that he still comes to see me. That he's still willing to tell me he loves me. I thank you that you love me. I thank you that you hadn't got fed up and said, I've had enough. But you still love me. Help us to love like you do. I lift up fathers and mothers and children and families today. And I ask you to uh, help them to guard against the things that this world are trying to uh, pull them into. You protect them. Provide, help them to provide or provide for them.
And uh, we give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand with me?